Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be sharing with you the books that I read this past month. So let's get started. First of all, I don't feel like I have a huge stack here to share, plus two odd two two other books that I read. Um, one is an audio, and I don't have that to show you here. And the other one was a book that I have already mailed uh, to a friend so that she could read it. So, um, let us kind of talk about this month because I feel like I have been in a really big reading slump. It's, so it's June, so these are the books that I read in May. I think because we had middle grade March and then I almost kind of, kind of continued forward with everything in April that May I just kind of went and that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm not going to feel I really stress about the lack of reading I did because what I have here is some really good books that I'm going to share with you. But <clears throat> and so far as um, like a variety of reading material, I'm not going to have that. And <clears throat> honestly, in so far as exactly what um, the order I have read these, I actually can't sh share that with you either because I really don't remember. But let's first of all talk about the two ones that I don't have um, to hold up and share with you. And these are the books. So the first one was The Land Beneath Us is the third book in this trilogy of... What? Awesome. The Beaches of Normandy and it is the story of three brothers and how they all end up on the beaches of Normandy in different military positions. The first one um, took us through the air. No. The first one I think was um, the Navy at sea. The second one was in the air. And then this third one, he is kind of the rangers that um, ended up on the beaches of Normandy. And how it all starts is at the beginning of the series, you had a tragic event that basically tears apart this family. And ironically, they all come back and heal on the beaches of Normandy. And that's kind of obvious in the first book. Like, you know um, that they're all going to get together at the end. The third one um, it is basically the innocent party in the whole matter and his story. And honestly, it was my favorite. This one was a resounding five stars for me. And it was easy. There is actually um, the reason that I think this was such a five star is because with Christian literature, this might be why some people choose it very often. But for me, Christian literature can end up being kind of bland in a spiritual growth type of things. It's like a little sprinkling of seasoning in there and then we'll kind of wash it clean and it's Christian fiction. And therefore the story just kind of falls flat. And I have seen, a, in recent years, I have seen a rise in Christian fiction that has really, um, it's not kind of a pattern, one size fits all type of thing. We actually have difficult situations that bring a story in depth. And, I'm, and I really like that. I really like that Christian fiction is kind of making that comeback. This one not only tackles like basically the the third boy who is kind of the innocent in, I'm, I'm using this lightly the innocent party and what had happened um, but you kind of see like the bitterness he takes on and you see this martyrdom he has within him and it's like this is what Christians deal with it's not just this um, holier than thou but it's that progression to there and you know again it's it's not that this you wake up and he is this character and he basically just becomes perfect in the next page and then the whole story is are they really ever going to get together kind of thing no you see him start out as, as a likable character but you see that he could be even more likable once these sins are brought to light and sarah sudden did that extremely well the other part of the story is the fact that you have a sweet young girl. Like she is so sweet and she is that perfect <laughs> perfection. But 
her sweetness in being um, not only small, she's really tiny, she um, is an orphan, so there's kind of like this dirty stigma, but she also carries with her a bit of her past. Aw, I love that little leaf. Why don't you go show Daddy? I think Daddy wants to see the little leaf. I really do. Um, she carries a, a bit of this orphan past with her, and it brings, you know, temptations that, to be honest, the first time I came across this and I'm like, this is going to be her flaw, I did kind of roll my eyes and it would have been a, a star drop for me if the author hadn't made this basically come back and bite her and then something that she had to work through regardless of where she was at presently. And I really like that. Another topic that is talk, talked about in this book that can be a trigger for some people, I could definitely see this, is the this, this sweet little girl gets raped and she gets pregnant out of wedlock. It was done well. You know what happens. Um, the guy comes in after the other guy basically is buckling himself back up and it's it's over and done with. I appreciate that. And then once she's pregnant, you're like, okay, that's what happened. Um, and then another thing, basically the there is this other thing in here of he's a serial rape kill, killer. And you know it i'm pretty sure you the reader would know who it is i didn't really find any deep mystery in that to be honest um but he i really liked disliking this guy <laughs> i have to say that um so all in all like that is really good if i dislike this bad character that I'm not supposed to like and it's fiction. I don't have to like him. I can hate him and it's beautiful. And I didn't, I did not like him. But I liked the sweet girl. I liked that she had some struggles. I liked the mother-in-law. Oh my goodness. And also you got to see a lot of the difficulties that a Hispanic dealt with during this time period. It wasn't just this time of the Japanese that had joined the troops, you know, they, there was that stigma there, but you also get this um, Hispanic that has to deal with that. And honestly, like he, he shares that there's a big struggle with that, but also how it was his, most of his life and, and things like that. And so I really like that the author brought that to light and, um, Especially because I, I do have family members that are Hispanic and I know that they have to deal with some things. So that was that was done in a pleasant way and I really appreciate that. The other book was 1776 by David McCullough. Oh my goodness. It was so good. Um, I knew a lot of the history that kind of goes along with this, but I really did not know the extent of it. Like how much in the war we were before the Declaration of Independence. Like, that didn't sink because we usually take certain events. We don't take a timeline of events like this 1776, this whole year of events, and lay it all out. And I was like, dang. So if you have to read a book this month, please go to your Hoopla app because it's on there for, with my library card. And I think if it's on Hoopla, it connects to a library card, but I think Hoopla just is whatever the database has. So it's on Hoopla. It's not the best narrator. I will say they have like this guy and the woman they switch off and it makes no sense why they did that. None whatsoever. Um, I really did not like that. But however, if that's like the way to read this book, please do it. Just Washington and how he had to, especially during this time period, like what he had to go through to keep pressing forward at a time when people were ready to walk away, when things were, you know, Valley Forge, it, it had a whole backstory behind it. There was just so much in that book that I do not think I can adequately review it. It was five stars. It was superb. Okay, let's talk about some of these other books that I can actually hold up and show to you. I have this book by A.W. Tozer and this is The Pursuit of God, 
The Human Thirst for the Divine. This book has been so influential for many, many religious leaders or religious... Many people have sung the praises of this book and people that I really admire and respect. And so this, you know, has taken me long enough to pick it up. To be honest, I was not impressed with it as much as I thought I would be. This author definitely almost has like a distracted writing is the best way I can describe it. And I'm gonna share like one of the big problems I have with this book. He talks about the idols that we have made and he uses Abraham and Isaac as an example. And I would have been okay with that. I, I really would have. The whole Abraham and Isaac sacrificing, I would have been okay with it as an example. However, in the book, he basically says that this was a test from God. Again, I don't disagree. It was a test of God because Abraham had basically made an idol out of Isaac. And I don't see that anywhere in scripture. Tozer claims that God had Abraham go and sacrifice Isaac to remove that idol of his heart. Again, I don't see that anywhere in scripture. The story of Abraham and Isaac was a picture of Christ to come, and it was a test of Abraham's faithfulness. That I see in scripture. I see that in Hebrews. I see that in scripture. I do not see that Abraham had made an idol of Isaac at all. I really, really struggled with that. But at, at certain times, he almost has, what is it, what is it called? Uh, argues himself. One part, he almost takes away the deity of God. He brings him down to a human level. And if I can remember, I will try to leave down below page numbers for that. And so go ahead and do your research. Again, if this is such a book that is well read and well known and well read. So, again, there was just a lot of little things and then sometimes I would be taking a picture and be like, what the heck is he talking about? And I would ask my husband. I don't think he was a Calvinist. I think he was, he was a Methodist. And then he joined the Christian and Missionary Alliance, which I don't know anything about the, the Christian and Missionary Alliance. Okay, I, I thought I had read this somewhere. He literally wrote this book on his knees, is what it says. So Towser, in the beginning, you kind of get a little bit of a background of him. And he liked to, you know, pray and read the Bible and do everything on his knees. And he actually wrote this book on his knees. Like I said, I, I really struggled with this. I think I ended up giving it three stars because when something was good, it was very good. And I, and I was really on par with it. But I just really struggled through a lot of it. And um, yeah, I gave it three stars. Um, because again, when it was good, it was really good. I just would have a really hard time, A, recommending this because this is not an easy read. This is a very difficult read. Um, and I, I know that I am not at the level that many devoted Christians are when it comes to understanding. But I think I can safely say that I I, I could see a lot of people really struggling with this book. Um, and again, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably would have seen some of my pictures saying, okay, here's a problem that I found really good. And then in the next clip would show a different page with a different section and people would be like, whoa, what are you reading? And it's the same book. And so <sighs> that's what I have to say about that one. So after those really good book, A.W. Tozer, meh, um, 1776, yeah, I have some other really good ones. Okay, I am so excited to share you. I have Love Without Borders by Angela Braniff. I was on the writing launch team for this. And her, this book, I think I, I love it so much and did give it, I think, five stars. It might have been four stars. Um, the, the reason I love it so much is that Really, when you have a book like this and four stars, when you have a book like this, it's 
and and you have watched her channel forever because you admire her so much like it's it's like icing on the cake um this book basically kind of tells how, how she's gotten to here the stuff that when you join the youtube uh community for her later um and you're trying to piece all this together it's all pieced together in this book and it goes back to her difficulties with conceiving and having children but actually even further back than that this goes back to the kind of person she was as a kid um finding her husband cr um so you get their thing and then her difficulties with conceiving and then all of the things that she went through in having a child child and then the next one and then after that adoption and then some of those difficulties like this woman after each difficulty she has still taken it to the lord she has still said what do you want me to do and she has still pursued that even when things don't look picture perfect even when things don't even look like what she assumes that they are going to look like everything has gone back to she goes and does to the best that god has given her for his glory what i like about that is what I, what else i like about this is that we get angela like this is the kind of thing i would expect her to write not a book that's going to almost glorify the family for lack of a better word you know how sometimes you just get biographies that that share that I don't see that at all in this. You can turn the light on if you need a Katie to paint. I don't see that at all at all in this. In fact, um, there is a word in here. I'm pretty sure it's the D word. Because so, suddenly it doesn't mean anything anymore and I can't remember it. But uh, she has her baby and like they're, they're talking about uh, maybe we need to do um, a C-section. She's like, nope, I've gotten to this point and I'm going to go forward with it. And if you like Kisses from Katie, I would suggest picking this book up. I don't know if I could say it's as amazing as Kisses for Katie just because Angela does share her heart and she does share a lot of her journey. And I would read this again, just like Kisses from Katie. And she does share scripture. I just don't think it's as in-depth as Kisses from Katie. And I'm more drawn to that. Also, Angela has that energy that sometimes, since I don't have it, I almost kind of come off of that. Can you turn that light on for Katie? Thank you. So all that to say, um, we I, I really loved it. I ended up giving it to my daughter. And she actually said she is almost done with it. I don't think she has actually finished it. But she, I picked it up to make this video and she's like, oh, I'm almost done with that. I love that. That book is so amazing. So I gave it to my daughter to read and she has really loved it. Um, language and all, yes I did because we enjoyed it that much. And then the next book I want to talk about is actually C.S. Lewis Screw Tape Letters. I listened to this on audio through Hoopla. Wow. I read that C.S. Lewis was sobbing writing this book i totally believe it this book basically is satan's angels i think i don't think it's actually um two it, two devils okay so this is two devils writing back and forth about getting the soul of a christian and it is not the black and white ways it's the wily sneaky ways that uh, the devil is known for and we say the devil and his angels we have some angels here working him and oh my goodness like it is powerful it is moving it is terrifying and it is life-changing that's all i can say about that pick it up you'll thank me later maybe don't read it at night <laughs> all right last book that i have for this video this Essentialism. The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McCowan. How do I adequately review this book? If you have not read The Power of Habit, I would actually read it with this book. This book is difficult because in a way it is actually kind of written with a business perspective. So this is kind of taking your business to a whole new level by being essential in what you choose, being essential in 
not just what you choose, but who you are and your whole routine in life, but it really does have a business perspective to it. But it's not only fitting for business people. Like me, I have just thought about my role as a mom and how if I just kept that goal, because this is what you're doing, is you're instead of having all these small little things going every which way, you're putting all your energy into one thing. If I am a mom and my energy, and I find this to be essentialism in my life, I cannot go and volunteer for everything out there. Focusing on the things that I have been called to do, keeping that essential in my life, again, it just really puts in perspective what I have the energy and capability to do. I can't be on social media all day if this is essential. I mean, it's just those type of, those are very poor um, examples but it's the best ones I've got for you right now, okay? I have decided to take this away and just really think about all the things that I have thought were essential to my life and actually put out what is. This book really changed many things, um, which, I mean, that's really hard to say, but it's kind of like the power of habit. You walk away and you start rethinking of your habits and what you do on a daily basis. Now your habits are those things that you do so you don't have to think about them so your brain has more power to do other things or more brain function to do other things. Like that is a whole message behind the power of habit habit, and starting to recognize those habits and breaking um, bad and, and, and taking on good and so on and so forth. You have to read the book to understand fully what I'm talking about. Essentialism basically starts breaking down the mindset. So it's choosing to say no so you can say a better yes is what essentially it is saying. After reading this book, I, I have decided to take a um, social media fast. It was kind of coming. I'm not gonna say like this book made me do it. It was totally coming. But now I actually have like a stronger drive to do that and putting in perspective those things that are essential in my life. This is definitely one of those books that you go away and you just think about all the decisions you have made, which seems very overwhelming and to a certain extent it is, but it's actually in a good way. This is not a Christian book. However, as a Christian, I can tell you, like, in my mind, I kept thinking of different verses in the Bible, how God has been pointing us to this. Like, um, choose this day whom you will serve, being essential in that. Um, it's just different. It, it's just somebody saying the old message in a different way that just makes you reflect on the tried and true message of scripture. And that is that Jesus Christ is, yes, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because of that, look what Jesus Christ chose as essential for his life. He didn't choose a home and a roof over his head. He chose to fulfill God's will. That doesn't mean we need to go and sell our house and everything, but we need to follow God's will. Again, realizing that this world is not our home. And all of that, I was just taking from this little book, just a really strong message. There we go, it has a very strong message. And one of the key points in here is, if you won't choose what is essential, someone else is gonna do it for you. So choose for yourself what is essential and what you're gonna follow before somebody else basically does all that work for you. What a book. So those are the books that I have to share with you. This month, as always, I invite you down in the comment section down below to tell me your favorites and what you, if you have read any of these and what your thoughts were. Let's start up that conversation down there below. So until next time, have another cup of coffee or tea and read another chapter.